All right, now we are talking about surface objects and surface tools. Now, the key difference between a surface object and a voxel object is that a surface object is more constrained by its own topology. When you're working with voxels, you're basically filling in small points in space and a mesh is being wrapped around it. This means that they are completely unconstrained by topology or by their resolution. When you're working with a surface object, what you're doing is you're moving around these vertices in the mesh. That means that it is possible to get some stretching on them. So if I were to grab my move tool, for example, and I just grab this and pull it out really far, you'll see that those points are getting very stretched as opposed to the points on the rest of the sphere. So this is, that is a downside of working with a, a surface model as opposed to a voxel model, but the advantage is that you can have non-uniform density of all the polygons. When you're working with a voxel model, the distribution of polygons is always going to be perfectly uniform, which makes it very hard to add in very fine details. But with a surface model, you can have non-uniform topology. So usually it's also significantly less uh, processor intensive to work with a surface model as opposed to a voxel model. So typically you'll want to switch to surface mode when it comes time to do much more fine details. Hmm. So working with surface models. So this is a surface model, volume 75 right here. It's labeled in the Vox tree with an S. So there's a whole host of surface tools right here, and many of them function exactly the same as their voxel counterparts. And there's a lot of them here, and I'm not going to go over each and every single one, but I'll go over some of the more useful ones. The very first up here is subdivide. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, more towards the end of the video. But the most common one that you'll be using is probably draw. And what this does is it just sculpts some onto your object. It is very responsive to alphas and it also works with all the different stroke modes. Now it's worth mentioning that the surface tools in 3D Coat tend to be significantly more sensitive than the voxel tools. So you'll see if I'm working with this sort of cracked alpha, I'm working with a very low brush strength, only about 5% and I'm getting some fairly serious results. If I increase the size of this, if I go up to 13%, then you can see we're getting some very uh, jagged results there, not quite desirable. So it's just something you need to keep in mind is that the surface tools tend to be much more sensitive. Now again, like in the voxels, you've got smooth and you've got pinch. Now if you remember, when I was talking about pinch, I mentioned that it's not terribly effective in voxel mode because the polygon distribution has to be uniform. But when you're working with surface mode, you can see we can pinch certain polygons very, very close together. And you see we get a very harsh result right there. So you see I can just pinch along there. And now we get a very nice, very crisp crease. And it's because we can bring those polygons very close together. We also have things like shift, which is basically just like the smudge tool from the voxel room. And then chisel is just like the uh, scrape. And with a lot of these, you are just going to have to play around with them, see how they work. Now there are a few in here that deserve special mention, like there is an expand brush, which basically does the exact opposite of a pinch, in that it will blow up certain areas, try and push the polygons away from each other. And then there's also something new in here, you get freeze. Now the way that freeze works, is that you're painting areas of the mesh that you don't want the brushes to affect. So if you're coming from a software like ZBrush, 
this is identical to masking. So if I go in with my draw brush and I start to sculpt, you'll see I'm not affecting that area. If I go back to freeze, I'm, oops, I'm not sure what happened there, but I can smooth the freeze as well. And then you'll see we get this area which has maximum influence by the brush and then the influence gradually goes away until it's completely gone. So that's freeze. You can't really do that in um, voxel mode or you can use the vox hide but this is a bit more intuitive because you can still see the surface you're working with. And then also you have a surface hide. So that would allow you to actually hide parts of the surface if that's what you want to do and then you can just hold control to bring them back. And there's a couple down here at the bottom that deserve special mention. The angulator and the smoother. Now first off, let me unfreeze everything. You can hold down control to unfreeze. Or if you hit control D, that will um, deselect the entire freeze area just like in Photoshop. Now if I go to the angulator down here, this is a very interesting tool. It's like a pinch, but it's a bit um, harsher, I'd say. The way it works is that you paint an area, like right there, and you'll see this little selection. I'll smooth my selection out a little bit. And then if I hit enter, it will pull all the points in that region towards the center of the selection area. If I hit control D to deselect, you'll see we get a very harsh angle, hence the term angulator. This is very useful if you're working with, uh, if you're doing hard surface work and you need a really quick harsh edge because the pinch can be a little bit hard to control, especially if you're trying to work at precise right angles. And the smoother is exactly the opposite. The way that it works is that it smooths the area inside and infinite number of times. And you'll see now that region is completely smooth. So I hit enter and you see totally smooth. Those are the basic uh, surface tools. There's a lot of them that are have some fairly special use cases like rapid or the mud brushes. But most of these are either uh, perform the same role as their voxel counterparts or they're just minor alterations of each other. But as far as surf, now the most unique, not unique, but a powerful surface tool is this subdivide. Now you can, if you've ever worked in 3D, you know that subdividing is just, you know, cutting faces in half both lengthwise and widthwise. Now, because 3D Coat in surface mode works exclusively with triangles, and you see every single one of these is a triangle, subdivision works a little bit differently. If you just subdivide the entire object, then you'll still cut each triangle into four separate triangles, but because we're working exclusively with triangles, we have a few other options. We can actually, with the subdivide tool active, we can paint a certain area which will freeze it, and then we can only subdivide that region. And you'll see now we've got this one area of high polygonal density in one, and the rest of it is very low density. So then if I started to draw, not sure if you can, there we go. So you can see here where the subdivided area starts. This looks a little bit finer, this looks a lot more coarse, and you'll see that is precisely the case with the polygons. So with those, that's, those are all the tools you really need in order to be an effective worker with surface models in 3D Coat, but there is another type of surface modeling called Live Clay, and this is very powerful, as it will allow you to work with dynamic subdivision. I will talk about that in the next video.